Welcome to this tutorial series on Distant Worlds 2 and this particular episode is going to be about iron weaponry which is all about disabling uh, enemy ships or bases or whatever else it might actually be and we can see through we've got a, we've got a Tekken a Tekken frigate an iron frigate which is coming through and all I've got on of all I've put on this one is actually just iron weaponry and it's going to be attacking this particular station now what it's going to do is when it gets close enough it's going to then fire an iron weapon now the the mount for the iron weapon on these Tekken ships is behind so we'll just zoom in a little bit with it and just sort of watch when it actually does fire it shouldn't be very very far now there it goes. That is the iron weapon that we sort of see back in through there. So it will be launched from behind the ship. It will then start to acquire its target and then move forward. So it will then just go back, zip on around, and then head, head into the actual target itself. So it's moving in with us. In we go. Now that there as well, it's now firing iron cannons as well. So we've got iron cannons firing. We also then have the uh, the iron bomb. You know, it's shooting down different things. It's using the iron can uh, the iron um, cannon as a point defense weapon. Now that, you can see there, it just blasted itself off to the side. I might just spin this around just so we can sort of see it a little bit more clearly. That is the blast. It's probably missed with that one there, I would think. If we go and click on the actual uh, on on the um, station itself, we can then have, hover over, and we can see there that in the last column under disabled is nothing actually showing there at all. So nothing has nothing has been impacted there at all. So let's just continue on. There's another one coming in, I think. There goes the next one. It's blasted out the back, and then it swings back around to the front. Let's just see where this one actually does uh, does go ultimately. That looks much better. Now that's actually hit the side of it. You can see that the iron bomb is an area of effect weapon. So it's not actually a direct fire weapon. And so you can see already with that one actually going in, the shielding has now dropped completely. And so that first shot has now brought the shield straight down. And you can see it's in the disabled column. And so what we can do is we can have a bit of a look to see, okay, well, what actually happened there? How did, how did that actually work? And if we go into the mining station and have a look at the actual component tree, we'll see that the Corvidian shields have been disabled for 29 seconds. So that was a good shot. We actually got through and we've now got the shields are now down for 29 seconds. We'll be able to do more iron, iron damage on the actual, on the, on the, um, on the ship itself. Now the iron weapons are very specific to different componentry on the ship. They target things, for example, like the shielding. They target the uh, weaponry, so the weaponry will sort of be targeted. They also should target the the, um, the sensors. Although I don't know if the iron bomb does. I'll show you that when we get into it. Um, what else does it target? It targets the um, if you've got uh, hyper. I think it, it may target reactors and hyper and hyperdrives. I think are the other things that it actually looks for. So it shouldn't really sort of do anything else. Just wait for it to keep on blasting. There's another one going in. Another hit. Now, our area of effect weapons don't tend to sort of miss. I'm still the defense is still down. We're now firing with the actual the other other guns. Still, nothing else has actually come down just yet. But we're seeing that there's some damage that's been done. There we go. We've just brought down a weapon now as well with that last blast. So it's not a it's not the greatest in terms of doing damage. Uh, and you can sort of think, okay, well, that's really not doing very well. <laughs> Why is that? Well, let's talk about iron weaponry and how to defend against them, because I've actually purposely built this so that this space station can defend against these iron weapons. And so what it's done, what you've actually got, if we have a look at the actual the mining station itself, you can see there that the interceptor missiles have now been uh, taken offline, so they've actually been targeted. They'll be offline for 30 seconds, plus the health is now down to 97% with those. So it's, it's got a little bit of damage that's been done, but it's mainly the disabling factor. These shields are still down for 21 seconds. They're not they're not damaged at all. So when they fire back up, the shielding will then come back up again and uh, and build back up around the actual ship itself. Some of the other things have been damaged a little bit though. You can see there that the um that the heavy armor has had some slight damage done to it. It's it's at 98%. The large mining engine has also it's got status damage, but it's hardly anything. It's been scratched. There may be a, a 
bit of a scratch in the paintwork or something, uh, the plasma blaster is down to 90%. This is direct damage, not iron damage. So what's the reason that this ship can protect itself reasonably well, now there's even better ways of doing this, is that it has a special component called the iron shield. And what this one does is it reduces the amount of damage that comes into the actual station itself. So if I took the iron shield off this particular ship or this, this particular craft, uh, it would be a different story. The, the, there'd be a lot more iron damage being done to the actual, like, you know, there'd be more disabling uh, going on uh, much, much faster. And so the iron shield basically takes 18 off the damage that gets uh, gets placed into the actual component itself. Sorry, I thought there was something crawling on me, but it wasn't. <laughs> spiders or bugs or something. Anyway, the iron shield, that's what the iron shield does. Now, there's other things that also give iron damage defense. And so this can be done through, uh, for example, sometimes the armor. Now, we don't actually have any iron. We've got, actually, we've got one iron damage def defense here with the heavy armor. But you can get specific armor to protect against iron damage as well. And so these things that just help the overall ship to mitigate the damage it does come through. And when we have a look at, for example, at uh, like a cargo bay, you can see, actually, it's not going to show us where we got the damage um, damage control units. So this damage control unit has got a component iron defense of five. And so basically, we've got the... Um, We've got the 18, uh, so any damage that's going to come in. In fact, if we have a look at uh, where have we got the countermeasure system, this has got a component iron defense of one. So we'll just use this as an example. And so the component, the component there, the damage from the iron bomb has to get through the 18 from the iron shield. The um, I don't know if both of these actually sort of... Uh, uh, get taken into account. It may be it may be both of those, so that's another two. That's up to twenty and twenty one. So we've got twenty one protection against the iron damage that's coming in uh, for that one component. And so each component will have the same sort of deal with this. In fact, if we just press escape, we'll just look at a few more shots going in and just to see what actually does happen here. and just hover it over. We've still only got the two components that are down. It's going to be the iron bomb that will do the main damage. These these other, these other uh, cannons won't do enough damage. It's going to be the um, that bomb itself that's going to have to sort of really do the heavy lifting. There we go. We just dropped all of the... All of the weapons have now been taken offline, and we've now got two defences offline as well. So we're starting to now pull apart at the ship. The ship, the, the, um, the base itself can no longer fight back, but we're not really damaging it very much at all. There's a little bit of damage going in. You can see there the general slots. We've got like three in the general slots that have now been damaged. So we can see there that, again, we've got a scratch in the paintwork. Uh, the iron shield has actually been damaged a little bit as well. Now that should make everything start to drop a bit faster because now, the, now that it's been damaged through traditional means, it means that it won't be up and running until the uh, the damage control units actually get it and get it fixed. Now it may it may fix it. This one's down to ninety six percent, but this should make it. That's probably what happened. That one probably came down. That then opened it up so that all of the weaponry has now been taken offline. Eleven seconds there, twenty one seconds in that case, and twenty five seconds there. Both shields are now down. One's down for just one more second. The other one's down for sixteen seconds. Uh, docking bay has been scratched slightly as well. <laughs> Let's just have a bit more of a look. And so these are now just all going in. We're seeing that the other defense has now come back up again. But because there's no real protection at the moment, everything is sort of um, is is taking a little bit of damage. So it's just more traditional damage more than anything at this point in time. There we go. We've just got another, uh, the defenses have just gone back down again. So you can see it's very, very particular, that disabling ability. But with, with all of those components disabled, the damage from the other components are actually getting through and doing damage to the ship itself. So we've got the ha both hangars have now been brought down. Uh, there's another blast. But you can see the disabling is hardly anything at all. It's just very, very specific to what it's actually doing. Now, one of the other weapons, its weapons, is now back online, although they're all damaged a little bit. So if we have another quick look in, th in before we get going... So again, the iron shield is now back up and running again. So this has now been repaired. And um, fuel cells, a little bit of damage, crew systems, cargo bays. This is all traditional damage. So the um, this one here is at 86%. So they, they'll need to be re repaired before they can fight back. So these really are all about 
making the ship vulnerable. And so what we can then do, and what I've done on my ship is, if we have a quick look at what my ship has got, is it's got an iron bomb, which does, uh, you can see there as we go down through the list, it's a seeking weapon, and it's at the back of the ship. This uh, this component in through here is the back of the of the actual ship itself, along, along with the engines. That's where it's being fired from. So the iron bomb is being fired from that large mount at the back. Uh, it's a seeking weapon and does area blast wave, which is what we've seen. So the um, the damage is in this. This is the this is the tra traditional damage. When it when it actually explodes, it does ten damage, so 0 0.88 per second, which is minuscule. So it hardly does any actual damage. Uh, the range is 1770. The area blast range, the actual range of that sort of purple sphere that that comes out is 160, and the speed to build that sphere is 300. So it's fairly slow. Like you know when it does do it. Um, the damage at maximum range, again, this is just traditional stuff, which we don't, for iron weaponry, you're not really looking at it from that from that aspect. You're trying to disable as much as you possibly can. This is then the interesting things. We've got iron damage of the engine, hyperdrive, shields, and weapons are all at 44. Now, one thing I'm not sure about with the iron bomb, I'm not 100% sure, is if it targets the sensors, because traditionally the iron weapons target engines, hyperdrive, shields, weapons, and sensors. But I don't know if the iron bomb also... I'm, I'm assuming it would, and I think it's just been left off the listing for some reason. Maybe it doesn't, but I'm, anyway, I'm, I'm sort of... That may be a bug. Anyway, that's it should be in there as well. There should be five five things that they actually that they, um, that they deal with. And we saw that as well. Now, we saw there also that the actual damage 44 is much more than the 2021 20, that we were looking at there for getting through into different componentry, you know, to 20 to sort of break through the iron shield and then the, um, and the armor itself. Um, and so in this case, we are getting damage done. If we have a look at the pulse blasters, I won't look at all the other bits and pieces. It's got certain things like the shield bypass, it's harder for it to break through shields, but then the armor bypass is good. That's why it's getting through and doing more damage into the deeper components uh, with this particular iron bomb. If we have a look at the iron pulse blaster, which is a point defense weapon, essentially, this one does um, six damage, uh, six iron damage. And this actually, this one, maybe, a, maybe it isn't a bug. This one only does damage to engines, shields, and weapons. That's all it actually does do, because it is predominantly a, a point defense weapon in this, sort of, in this sort of case. Anyway, that sort of just gives you a bit of a feel for what does go on. They're quite useful if you want to be capturing things and not having too much damage so you can then sort of fly them out after you get them all repaired. And so one thing we, we do actually have on this ship is a uh, is an assault pod. And so it's got two assault pods, actually. And so what I'll do is I'll just change, the, change what we're doing. We're just going to do a long right click and we'll just capture because the shielding is now down. When the shielding is down, they can then send their assault pods in. So let's have a bit of a look and see what actually does happen in here. There goes the assault pod. There's another iron weapon going in. Hopefully it won't blast the assault pod. I think we, I think the guys got on board. So we've got 107 marines essentially on a, on a large mining station now. What they will then do is we'll start to sort of see that other components will now in the disabled. See how there's now another component has gone down in the general slot as disabled. That's not the iron weaponry doing that. That is the actual assault squad that is now starting to pull things up, uh, apart. So we'll just let it go for a little bit longer. Uh, as you can see there, the sensors have come down. As we watch this, we see more and more things drop. The ship will no longer keep on firing while there's while there's um, while there's marines on board. And so we'll see the sensors have now been taken offline by the by the marines. Uh, we should see more and more sort of happen. There's another one down, another general slot. And as they go through, there's three. So if we have a bit of a look inside the ship, they'll just be walking through the ship. There's a fuel cell that's been disconnected, an energy collector dis uh, disconnected, cargo bays. The countermeasure system has been disconnected by the by the Marines that are on board. So they're disabling as they go as well. So they're not iron weapons. They're actually there's the Marines that are doing that. Anyway, that's the um, that's how iron weapons sort of work in combat. Just so you can sort of see how that actually does work. The uh, you can see there the shields look like they've come back online, or maybe not. No, there's still one defense that's down. It just looks like there's a little bit of shielding coming. There is. There's four shielding on the actual ship itself. We have a quick look inside again. Um, oh yeah, no, this one's still down for six seconds. That shield is uh, is okay. If we just go back out again and just watch that 
in uh, look I won't worry about it anyway you get the idea that's what iron weapons actually do let's have a look and see what the what what tech is involved with these and so this is your iron tech you've essentially got your basic uh, irons iron weapons running through here even these are effective you know like <clears throat> an iron cannon does uh, 24 damage uh, 24 iron damage you can see their engines hyperdrive sensors shields and weapons so it is it is a bit broader than the actual iron bomb and 24 is not bad so it can still actually do what it needs to do uh, the thing is though that this is actually a direct fire weapon so it needs to be pointed at the uh, at the craft and then it sort of fires the iron beam uh, at that point it doesn't actually send a bomb that explodes as an area weapon uh, they've also got the iron point defense which we saw on the actual ship itself and so these are iron pulse blasters which do only six iron damage and we saw that there just to the engines shields and weapons which if it's if it's trying to bring down small craft that's all it has to worry about it doesn't need to disable anything else so that's why i'm thinking maybe maybe it's not a bug but i was actually thought was an actual bug in through there the heavy iron weapon is taken only and this is the one that's got the 44 with the area of effect so very very nuanced sort of weapon great at uh, disabling of course this is the weapon that does do the disabling and so if you are wanting to capture like if you in the early part of the game if you're playing as the Tekans, you may want to sort of get a lot of iron weapons so you can try to ca uh, capture pirate ships for example and sort of pull them apart for technology this is sort of like more also in keeping with the theme of the Tekans, which is to um is to salvage and, and sort of uh, and sort of grunt your way through, not grunt your way through but to sort of salvage your way through the game and try to find things and uh, cobble things together uh, that's sort of what the Tekken personality actually is anyway that's sort of the iron weapons I mean we've had a quick look at the actual design of the ship with you know how things are sort of have been placed on board probably in hindsight it would have been better for me to use the um, the the actual iron cannons in through there as well like to get the 24 rather than just the six because the six wasn't doing anything against that ship once that once that iron shield was up uh the the electromagnetic defense is back and through here as well this is the iron shield back and through this side so you can see there the component iron defense of 50 means there's, there's a lot you can't really even with an iron bomb break into that thing and just disable it um it, with 50 iron defense that's that's enormous most components have got like one one to five somewhere in, in around there but the iron damage defense is for the whole ship so that mitigates any of the actual iron damage coming into the ship itself but as we sort of saw with the iron weapons they also have a very small actual damage component to them as well but it's mainly the disabling anyway i don't to go on much more with this i think this sort of covers what iron weapons do uh they're fun to use um you know but you've got to think okay do i want to be disabling things do i not want to be disabling things by the way the uh, the electromagnetic defense the iron shield is also great if you are needing to sort of get into uh, nebulas and sort of if there's if there's a nebula in particular that you really sort of need to break into you may want to just put them on as a matter of course they're fairly weighty at at, at 20 so it's mainly for bigger ships but um, certainly it is a, a, a great uh, addition once you actually do go and get that one just for your exploration i'll leave it there guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next exciting episode of this um, tutorial series